Hello everybody and welcome to another week of Friday Night Spotlight brought to you by Jones Ford Buick GMC, your hometown dealer for more than 50 years. Our game this week features two of Pinal County's very own in Costa Grande Union and Maricopa. Um, this is the first time in quite a while that these two teams have faced off. And while both of them are undefeated right now, they are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, Costa Grande Union went up to Peoria and got a big win against the Panthers and Maricopa just narrowly defeated Mesa Skylines 7-5. Now, David, you were out at the CG Union game last week, and what did you see from the Cougars? Um, the Cougars are, again, relying on their quarterback play between Angel Flores, but also their running back play with R.J. Keaton. R.J. Keaton had an incredible game for them. He really kept them in this game uh, last week against Peoria because towards the second half, it became more of a shootout on, on offense for both teams. So R.J. Keaton came out with three touchdowns in that game, and he was even uh, selected by the Arizona Cardinals as the high school player of the week. So that is a huge, uh, huge award for him and a huge recollection of what he did and uh, in recognition of his efforts. But Costa Grande Union is both great on, on offense and defense. I think the defense can be a little bit lackadaisical sometimes when it comes to uh, giving up big plays on passing, on passing attempts. Uh, down the field and uh, covering wide receivers can be tough with those defensive backs, so I think that's something to look out for. But for me, this is a clash between a very experienced uh, upperclassman core with Casa Grande Union versus a not as experienced and young Maricopa team with them starting a lot of uh, sophomores and juniors on this squad with Casa Grande having most of their seniors being starters on this team. So for me, it's going to come down to how can Maricopa stop this Angel Flores, R.J. Keaton pair at quarterback and running back. For me, I think Casa Grande just has too many weapons on their side. Uh, Cougars get the win for me, and I think they just keep going along to be a potential 4A playoff contender coming, going into this year. So, David mentioned the young Maricopa squad. Uh, sophomore quarterback, Damian Logan, he's pretty much been their go-to guy, their offensive um, weapon, you could say, for, for the Rams. You know, they don't really have much of a running game, so they're really heavily depend on Logan. Um, Max Preps only had stats for their first game against Tucson two weeks ago, and he had three touchdowns and 159 yards. Defensively, the Rams are led by Ian Palm with 15 tackles and Anthony Ru Ruiz, who also has 10. Um, you know, there's not really much to say about Maricopa's offense. It's just like David mentioned, you know, they're really inexperienced right now. Just sophomores, a new head coach and everything. This is their third game of the season, and I really believe this is going to be a learning experience for them. David mentioned TG Union. They just have a lot of talent and the experience, and those two things combined just kind of put, put them over the top. Um, David, is there anything else you think that people should know? I will say one more thing about Maricopa, though, is that they're a very scrappy team. You know, last week, how many times, how many often, it's not very often you see a game end in a 7-5 to five score for football. That's a little bit crazy in my eyes. So they're a very scrappy team while they are young and a little bit inexperienced. That scrappiness and that, that dog fight in them really pushes them forward and helps them when it comes to if they're a little bit down, they may be able to you know squeak out something they need because they are so resilient when it comes to it. They have, they have that resiliency, but at the same time, Casa Grande is just a huge weapon. They are huge contenders in the 4A uh, conference for me, and I still see the Cougars taking this one in the, in the win, with the win. Uh, real quickly, I do have to point out and give a shout out to Maricopa field goal kicker McKinley Hacker, who is the star scorer for the Maricopa girls soccer team. And you know, you got to be on the lookout for this girl because she can definitely um, make those shots for the Rams. And that does it for this week's um, game of the week, re um, you know, preview type thing. And now we are going to be heading on to our picks. David, what game do you have your eye on this week? I got the Pumas. We got the Sequoia Pathway Pumas taking on the Bisbee Pumas. And the reason I wanted to bring this one up is because this is going to be a real test for Sequoia Pathway in my eyes. They're 2-1 and one right now uh, going into this game. Bisbee is 2-1 and one going into this game. So these are two teams that both have a lot to prove and are trying to get to that next spot where they can possibly contend for a playoff spot down the road. It is still very early in the season, however. But this Sequoia Pathway team has a lot of fight in them, and they are currently on their two-game winning streak. They lost their opener, uh, but they are very tight right now with uh, being able to 
get those wins that they need. They had a blowout win, but also a very close win in their last two games. And it's going to be a battle of the, of the tailbacks uh, in this for in this game for both Sequoia Pathway and Bisbee, with Sequoia Pathway having Trey Lacey. Uh, he's off to a fantastic start in 2021. He's already surpassed the 500 rushing yards mark just three games into the season. He's also scored six times. And then for Bisbee, you got uh, you got Diego Chavez. He's rushed for 457 yards and seven scores. So this is going to be a battle between this these two very stout running back running teams where their running their their run game is the offense for the most part for this team. So it really just it comes down to which defense can stop that run game. I have Sequoia Pathway taking this one. I think Friday night they'll be able to really show off this running game and be the to get the edge between these two running squads. I think Sequoia Pathway, the Pumas are taking that one. Uh, depends on which Pumas you're talking about because they're both called the Pumas, but I'm taking the Sequoia Pathway Pumas on this one. Okay, and now my game to watch this week is going to be Coolidge traveling up to Phoenix Christian. Now, Coolidge has had a tough past couple of weeks. They hosted Benjamin Franklin and lost 34-8. Last week they went on the road to Yuma Catholic and another blowout loss, unfortunately, for the Bears. On the plus side, it was kind of the same deal for Phoenix Christian as they also got blanked by Arizona Lutheran 52-0. Now, for the Bears, um, it's a little kind of an off year for them. You know, offensively, they don't have that, that big quarterback that they've had in the past couple of years with Valentine Rodriguez and last year with... Um, Jacob Gunter this year, it's Connor Ferguson. So far, he has 127 passing yards, one touchdown, and one interception. The plus side is the Bears still have a decent running game this year with Komar Jeffries and Tad Lynch. Um, both of them have combined for five touchdowns so far this season. Jeffries has 131 rushing yards, and Tad Lynch leads the team with 219. The good thing here is Phoenix Christian struggles defending the running game last week. Arizona Lutheran, a really heavy running team. And, you know, earlier in the season, they also lost to Round Valley, who posted 253 rushing yards. So I think this is the game where the Bears bounce back and get, that, um, get a win. And it's kind of a crucial moment in the season for them. They're going to travel off to Tucson next week to take on Mika Mountain. And then they come back home to host one of their big rivals and 2 a defending champions, Santa Cruz Valley. So critical moment for the Bears in this game, but I think they're going to pull it out. So just real quickly, you know, we're going to throw up here our picks for this week. And with that, that does it for this week's Friday Night Spotlight. Be sure to check us out over the weekend for all of our football game coverage.